The test is in four part, part 1, part 2, part 3, and part 4. Now look at part 1. Part 1 you hear two travellers, Lilith and Alex, having a discussion in a cafe. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Hey, Alex, are you okay? I was worried something happened. Oh, sorry for being late. I drove down the wrong highway and got lost. Don't worry, it's only been 20 minutes. Actually, I just looked at some Austin tourist websites. I got some tea. You want anything? Yeah, I think I have some tomato juice. It's just what I need right now. Yes, it's really hot and humid out right now. I think I'll get iced tea this time around. So you went on the wrong highway, huh? <laughs> For sure. I've never driven in this area before, right? So after I pick up the rental car from the airport, I try to follow the map to the downtown area here. Unfortunately, there was a lot of road construction going on, and I went south on the highway instead of going north. After a few minutes, I realized I was going the wrong way, so I exited the highway and came back up here. Well, I'm glad you're here, okay? Did everything go well at the car rental place? Oh, yeah, it went very well. The business owner was kind of a strange person, really tall and thin. He had a bushy beard and moustache. He was also wearing a cowboy hat. I'd never quite seen anyone quite like that before. I guess every place in the world has eccentric people. Yeah, definitely. But he told me about all these great places to eat around here. He said they have some really great Mexican food in the area. That's great. I haven't had that in such a long time. We definitely have to go to a place for dinner. Well, I want some more iced tea. How about you? Yeah, I need to order still. You know what? I think I'll get one of their sandwiches too. They look really good. Okay, let's order then. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. Now then, what are we going to do today? I was thinking it would be nice to see the state capital and then maybe the university. Well, according to the website, let me see. The state capital has tours only on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. Yeah, if we went there, it would be much better to go on a guided tour. Oh, wait. Yes, there are tours on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, but also on Saturdays. The university site lists a lot of places that are interesting, so maybe we can spend most of the day at both the capital and there. We should definitely go to the lake after that as well and even spend the night camping there. Great plan. Is there anything else you found online? Yeah, I know you studied biology, so I was thinking that the park would be good. They have a pretty unique collection of trees and plants. They are open Monday through Saturday, so we can go there any time. There's also the mountain. There are some photos on the website. It looks like they have some great views of the city, and I definitely want to do some hiking. Yes, we would have to take another day for the park and the mountain. But you know, the guy at the rental place was talking about the weather. It seems that there will be a pretty bad storm coming tomorrow. We need to plan around that since it won't be good to be outside when it comes. Certainly not. It's not worth hiking somewhere if the weather is terrible. You know, we can go to the park and the mountain today and then go to the indoor places, the capital and the university tomorrow. It'll be hard to get around in the rain, but at least we'll be inside. I agree. By the way, how much are these places? All of them are free except for the park. Wait, I'm not sure about the capital tour. Yeah, they don't charge anything for the guided tours. 
All right then, we'll go hiking first and then relax at the park. Then we can camp at the lake. We'll go to the capital and the university tomorrow. Yeah, this is one of the best universities in the country, especially known for their art programs. Really? Yeah, I heard about that. They have some art galleries there too, ones with some good modern art. Wow, it seems like that's a lot for us. Yeah, I'm really excited about camping at the lake. The sunsets are supposed to be beautiful there. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a doctor from a medical center giving some information about the center. As you listen, answer questions 11 to 20. First, you will have some time to look at questions 11 to 14. As you listen, answer questions 11 to 14. Section 2 Good morning, everyone. I'm John Smith, the General Practitioner of London Fields Medical Centre, and I'm very glad to give you a brief introduction about our practice and some suggestions about how to see a doctor here. Our receptionists are usually the first point of contact and are here to help you. They have a lot of information to hand and in most cases will be able to help you with your inquiry, ensuring you see the most appropriate clinician. OK, right. Well, the first thing to do is to register. We can only accept new patients who live in our practice catchment area. To register with us, you will need two proofs of address, such as bank statements or tenancy agreements, plus one form of ID, such as passport or driver's license. If you are foreign nationals, then you'll have to register as a temporary visitor. Then. Fill in this form. It's a medical history form. You have to give details of any illnesses you have had. Then you also need to write down if you've got any allergies. OK? This as well as that. We need to know if you've had any operations. And, last of all, you have to give full details of current medication you may be on. This as well as that. You need to fill in this registration card. This is for your personal details. That's your full name, address and telephone numbers. OK? And we also need to make an appointment for you to see the doctor for a new patient health check. It'll just take about 15 minutes. That's all. It's just a basic checkup, really. Before the speaker goes on with his introduction, look at questions 15 to 20. Now listen to the continued talk and answer questions 15 to 20 by choosing the appropriate letters. OK, then. 
Let me tell you something about the health centre. We have five GPs here, general practitioners. We also have a practice nurse who looks after minor injuries. She can also administer some treatments. We also have a chiropodist. That's a foot specialist. She's private, which means you have to pay for the service unless you're over sixty-five. If you want to see a doctor, you have to make an appointment first. Please call our main switchboard number on o two o seven nine two three eight one double o to book an appointment at either our main practice or one of our branch surgeries. You can also email for an appointment on London Fields Medical at NHS dot net. Urgent cases are seen on the day. If your condition is non-urgent, you can expect to see a GP within two working days. Though you may have to wait longer if you want to see a particular GP. If it's an emergency, you'd better come straight here to the centre. One of the doctors can usually see you. Or you can go to the emergency department at the hospital in town. If you are very sick, you can ask for a home visit as well. On Friday afternoons, we have an open surgery, which means you can come along and just wait to see a doctor. But you may have to wait for several hours, so it's much better to make an appointment and come at the specified time. Usually, when you see a doctor, you'll be given a prescription for medicine which you need to take, or you can choose to go to a pharmacist in a chemist's shop. If the doctor decides that you will need the medication for a long time, you'll be given a repeat prescription form. This allows you to get a further supply without seeing the doctor again. You simply leave the repeat form here a few days before you need it. Then you pick up the medication at the chemist's. Oh, you may wonder how much this all costs. Well, there is no charge for seeing a doctor. You can make an appointment any time to see one of our doctors, and it will not cost you anything for the consultation. However, you need to pay for the prescription. And the cost varies with the medicine, but it's usually just a few pounds. Nevertheless, in some situations, such as pregnancy, the prescription is then free. All right. Do you have any other questions? That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You'll hear a talk between an interviewer and an interviewee called Chris Evans from the Royal Caledonian Curling Club about ice curling. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Today we're pleased to have on the show Chris Evans from the Royal Caledonian Curling Club. Now let's welcome Chris to tell us something about ice curling. Chris, please. Thank you. It's my honour to briefly talk about ice curling here to all of you. 
So let's start with what curling is. Curling is a sport in which players slide stones on an ice rink towards a target area which is segmented into four concentric circles. Two curling teams consist of four players, the lead, the second, the third, and finally the skip. The captain of the curling team and its players will throw their stones in the order stated above. Each team has eight stones. The purpose is to accumulate the highest score in the game. Points are scored depending on which stone is resting closest to the centre of the target area at the end of the game. The ice surface on which the game is played or the rink in curling is called the sheet. It is covered with tiny droplets of water that become ice and cause the stones to curl or deviate from a straight path. The curling players should slide the heavy polished stones or rocks across the ice curling sheets towards the house, a circular target marked on the ice, as I've mentioned before. There are several pieces of equipment essential for a curling game, so a concise instruction will be given to you. The most important things are the curling brush, which is used to sweep the ice surface in the path of the stone, as well as the curling stone, which is sometimes called rock. The former is usually made of horsehair, and the latter is made of granite, mainly coming from Scotland. Curling shoes are similar to ordinary athletic shoes, except that the two shoes in a pair have dissimilar soles. The sole of the slider shoe, which is designed for the sliding foot, is typically made of Teflon, while the gripper shoe for the hack foot has a special layer of rubber applied to the sole. During the curling game, you may also find a stopwatch attached either to the player's clothing or the broom, which is used to time the stones over a fixed distance to calculate their speed. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. Now, a word about the development of curling clubs. Curling is thought to have been invented in medieval Scotland, and outdoor curling was very popular in Scotland between the 16th and 19th centuries, as the climates provided good ice conditions every winter. Kilsyth Curling Club is renowned as the first club in the world, having been formally constituted in 1716, and widely influencing ice curling development. In Kilsyth today, both men's and ladies' sections are thriving, participating in all major competitions and having won championships in the British Open in the past. The mother club of curling, Grand Caledonian Curling Club, was instituted in 1838 for the purpose, not as such to attract people's interest, but to regulate the ancient Scottish game of curling by general laws. With these official rules, the young curlers could be trained in a more professional way. By 1842, the new national club had sought to obtain royal patronage, and it has ever since been known as the Royal Caledonian Curling Club. However, many sports, such as athletics and tennis, were frowned upon as being too recreational and not practical enough. So the Crown banned them by law during the 1300s, in the hope that men would instead practice the archery skills that were seen as vital to the country's defence and the ban was lifted in the 17th century. So, do you know the reason for curling being kept during the 16th century? Is it because it was so popular, or because people from all ages like children could play it? The spirit of curling dictates that one never cheers mistakes, misses, or gaffes by one's opponent. And most importantly, all the team members should strictly follow the instructions of their captain, which is essential for men in battle. Curling was brought to Canada from Scotland and some curling was played informally before 1800. Curlers often used iron curling stones made from melted materials such as cannonballs rather than granite until the early 1900s because there were transport problems importing granite stones from Scotland. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now it turns to part four. Part four. You will hear a monologue on the subject of the Celt. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Welcome to this introductory lecture on the Celts. Who were the Celts? The Celts were an Indo-European group, that is, related linguistically to the Greeks, the Germanic peoples, certain Italic groups and peoples of the Indian subcontinent. They arose in Central Europe at the beginning of the first millennium BC and were an iron-using and horse-rearing peoples. By the end of the first millennium BC, their cultural group had spread up and down the Danube and Rhine, taking in Gaul, Ireland and Britain, across central Europe, into northern Italy and northern Spain. Their roaming across Europe led some of the Celtic tribes to sack Rome in 390 BC, creating a fear of the northern barbarians that was to haunt Romans for hundreds of years to come. The Celts are defined archaeologically by the type sites of Hulsat and Latene, the former being taken to relate to an earlier phase of cultural development. Hulstat, an ancient salt mining area, was excavated from 1876 onwards by the Viennese Academy of Sciences and provided the first classification of the prehistoric Celts. In 1858, the waters of Lake Neuchatel in Switzerland sunk to a low level, revealing a large prehistoric settlement with a huge number of surviving artefacts. The nearby town of Latene gave its name to the second phase of Celtic cultural development. However, please note that these phases overlap through time and are defined according to geographical area. Let's look at each of these, taking the Hulstadt first. Hulstadt culture is characterized in four stages. A and B were during the Late Bronze Age, from about 1200 to 700 BC. C was in the Early Iron Age, from about 700 to 600 BC. D was from about 600 to 475 BC. The Hallstatt culture spanned Central Europe, with its center in the area around Hallstatt in Central Austria. There were two distinct cultural zones, the Eastern and the Western. At the start of the period, long-distance trade was already well established in copper and tin, the basic requirements for manufacture of bronze. From about 700 BC, trade in iron also became established. The Hallstatt area also already controlled the trade in salt, crucial when there were few other means to preserve food. Control of these two crucial trade goods, iron and salt, provided the basis for the accumulation of wealth and influence. From 800 BC, some burials of rich people can be identified in Central Europe, with grave goods such as wheeled wagons and iron swords. Hallstatt C saw the construction of fortified hilltop settlements to the north of the Alps. These had burial mounds holding very high-quality goods such as vehicles and expensive imported treasures. By the time of the Hallstatt D period, these increasingly extravagant burial mounds were clustered around a few major hill forts to the southwest of the region. This suggests a development and a concentration of wealth and social power, possibly based on the development of Massilia, present-day Marseille, as a Greek trading port. The expansion of luxury trade brought greater opportunities for profit and helped to create an increasingly stratified society, with the development of a wealthy nobility. Over the period from 1846 to 1863, a thousand graves were found at Hallstatt, with an astonishing range of artefacts, including clothing and salt mining equipment, as well as weapons, jewellery, pottery, and imported bronze vessels in the chieftain's graves. 
The Latene era was the time of Celtic expansion and migration and the time of formation of the myths. The Latene culture is named after the site in Switzerland where it was first discovered. The Latene people were those known to the Romans as Gauls, originally found in an area from eastern France to Bohemia. The Latene culture spread rapidly from about 400 BC. The Laten Celts settled in Spain in 450 BC, in northern Italy in 400 BC, invaded Rome in 390 BC, invaded Greece in 279 BC, invaded Galatia in modern Turkey in 270 BC. By 200 BC, they occupied the lands that are now Britain, the Netherlands, Brittany, Belgium, Germany and Switzerland. There is much debate over how much of the expansion into Britain was achieved through invasion and settlement and how much was the expression of cultural transfer that accompanied trade and reflected the commonality of kinship and language of many tribes. There is little evidence for actual migration of Latin people into Britain. Nevertheless, it does appear that the Latin culture was more militarily focused than the Hallstatt one. The Latin graves across Europe hold iron weapons, swords and spearheads, and wooden shields, as well as everyday items such as razors, yokes, cauldrons and jewellery. That is the end of part 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers.